Hi everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. I'm uh, going to bring you a difficult one today. We're going to step outside the norm here a little bit. Something not really a beginner's level fly. More of a realistic looking fly. Um, articulated as you can see there. So, pretty cool fly. We're tying a green drake nymph. We are, right now here at the shop, we're pushing the end of April. And the green drakes are going to be coming off in the next month. And I'm going to be ready for them, so we're going to tie some green drake nymphs. What we're going to start out with, well, for first, I'm going to tell you how, two things. I'm going to tell you sit back and get comfy because this is going to be a long one. And two, how I got on to doing this was a friend of ours comes into the shop, Pat. He uh, asked me for a pattern for a green drake nymph because there's not really a whole lot out there. So I decided to sit down and come up with one. And you'll see right now a picture of one that I already tied and um, how it matches. I took a picture of a real green drake nymph. The one in the picture there is actually from a limestone stream. The limestone stream green drakes are a little bit lighter than from a freestone. So you can adjust it if you you know if you fish more like Kettle Creek or something a big large freestone stream. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use two hooks in this one. They're both going to be size 12 the Ichi 2220 streamer hooks. The first what I'm going to start out tying is the back end okay and I'm going to tie back to the back and I'm going to make a ball because we're going to put a tail on this. Now this is a mayfly so it gets three tails and we're going to tie it out of moose mane. The first one, the one you saw in the picture, I actually tied with um, wood duck flank or mallard flank actually I believe it was but reason being, reason why I tied it that way was a long time ago we had a pattern that was tied similar to this with um, it was an articulated one like this and it was tied with wood duck for the tail but we're going to use moose mane because moose mane makes a nice tail especially a nice long tail for one like this and I'm just going to put this on one tail at a time, one tail fiber at a time and because it's such a large fly that's why I'm a little bit zoomed out a little bit more than normal on this one but we're just going to start with one on the side there and you see it's a size 12 hook I'm making the tail about the size of the size 12 hook about the length I mean and I'm going to put one on each side and then one on the top green drake hatch for those of you who are lucky enough to have them in your area is a very large fly, a very large mayfly and we are blessed here in the central Pennsylvania region to have some really good hatches on some of our streams um, Penn's Crick, Little J gets some, uh, Yellow Crick has them, the, that's the stream that I fished them on, on Yellow Crick um, you know you can go up north you got Kettle Creek has a very nice hatch where they also come off with the brown drakes at the same time so you got lots of big flies on the water up there which is makes it a lot funner okay and then there, there you can see the three fibers you know spread out so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a piece of scud back on okay the scud back the reason I'm using the scud back is to give it a different color on the back. The back is a little bit darker than the bottom of the fly so that's why we're going to use scud back. There we go, we're just sitting it on top and then I'm wrapping it back to hold it, holding it making sure I keep it on the top of the hook there and wrapping it back to those tail fibers. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is put a little bit of ribbing on. For ribbing, I'm using embroidery thread. I'm using a brown embroidery thread. And when you cut off a piece of embroidery thread, there's like six or eight strands on it. I'm using one of the strands. And then that strand actually is two strands. But I'm just using the one piece of two strands. Okay, and then we're just going to wrap it back to the same spot there. And we're going to cover our hook shank here with some thread. Okay. 
Okay, next thing we're going to add on is dubbing. This section here is very simple. Um, it's the next, the front half that takes some time. For dubbing, what I'm using is um, extremely fine natural dubbing, sulfur yellow from Nature Spirit. Uh, they are a lighter color, like a lighter yellow, so this actually matches it pretty closely. And like I said, the old pattern that we had, that, that's what it uses, like a light sulfur, sulfur yellow color. So, I really just want to put enough on here. I'm using 140 denier cream thread, by the way. I think I forgot to say that. And I'm just really putting enough on here to cover the thread, give it just a little bit of body, not make it too thick. Um, we have caught some of these flies out on Yellow Creek where we mainly fish them at when they're coming off. And we have measured them. Actually, we haven't caught the nymphs, but we have caught the the duns. And the body on the dun measures about an inch and a half long. So that gives you an idea how big of the size. And it's only a three-day hatch, and it's a very pro prolific three-day hatch. So imagine... The whole hatch of this one insect happening in three days. And then combine that with they're an inch and a half long. So when they fill the sky, they really fill the sky up. And that's why it's such a big hit with fly fishermen because it's one of the biggest eastern hatches. It's one of the biggest eastern mayflies to come off for one. And when they come off, they they come off in large numbers, which really causes a sight to be seen okay there like I said we're just gonna cover it up enough to not build up body too much but give it a nice color next thing I'm gonna do and why I'm using the cream thread is because it blends in with this sulfur yellow real nice next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some gills on this fly okay for the gills I'm using some ostrich harrow this is ginger, and I like this color for this fly. It makes a nice colored gill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like two at a time here. And I'm just going to put one on each side. And as you'll see here, I'm coming back in here a good ways. The tips are a little bit small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one on each side here. And my ribbing got wrapped around my bobbin there so and then just make like two wraps to get it nice and tight there and then we're gonna make sure they're on the side where we want it and then I'm gonna trim these two off in the back All right. I'll trim the front sides here in a second now we're gonna do this again same thing, put one on each side, but I'm going to bring it back, oh, about, I don't know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Big enough, what, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rib in between this, in between each one of these gills with my embroidery thread here in a second. So, pull these out here so you can see them. I want to be able to get my embroidery thread in between them whenever I come back here and uh, and rib this in a second. And I'm going to do this one more time on this back half. Okay, now that we got those in line here, I'm going to trim them to length. And what I want is, I just want more or less enough, I want to angle it back for one you can see how I, it's longer out here and it angles in towards the body okay I don't want them real long because they're just little gills on the side so that makes a nice little gill for me the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my um, scud back up over the back and then we're just gonna tie it off on top Okay, and we're just going to loose loop it so it's in place, and then a couple of nice tight wraps. 
And we'll trim this off and set it aside because we're going to need it again on the front piece. Now we're going to take our embroidery thread and we're going to wrap it on here. And like I said, we're going to space it nice and evenly. And then when we get up to those gills, we are going to go in behind the back gills and make a wrap. And then we're going to go in between the gills to make the next wrap. Let me separate these here so I can get it in between. Okay. And just keep wrapping this evenly in between those gills until we get up here to the head. And we're just going to tie it off at the head. Alright, then we'll trim this off. We're going to save this piece for the next section. And we're just going to whip finish this off here. And this is the back end of our fly. Okay, like I said, I'm in 13 minutes already. This isn't the easiest fly, but that's only half of it. Okay, now we're going to start the front section of the fly. We're going to set that aside for a second. We're going to grab our other size 12 hook. And I'm going to, before I tie the other one on, I'm going to have to cut the barb off of that, but I forgot to. We'll come back to that in a second. We're going to start the thread on here. And what I want to do is I'm going to put lively legs on this. But I'm not going to put them on just right this second. But what I am going to do is I'm going to mark it where they're going to go on. And you can use a marker or just mark it in your mind, however you want to do it. But I'm going to trim the lively legs. Lively legs, you can see, has this tag on the front and the back. I already cut the back off. But you want to cut this tag off. Just leave just enough you can see there I left just enough to tie down to but then I'm gonna lay this on and use that as my see where it's at there and I'm not gonna take the next section any further than that so for video purpose here we're gonna make a mark on that thread there you can see that mark I'm not going to go any further than that with my dubbing so we're gonna come up here we're gonna wrap this back to the bend of the hook now, to connect these two sections, what I'm going to use is a piece of Senyo intruder wire. And I don't need a very long piece, but I'm going to put a piece on here and I'm going to run it a little bit long. And the important thing here is I keep it underneath the hook. Alright, and I'm going to wrap this on underneath the hook, keeping it down there on the bottom as best as I can. And then I'm just going to wrap up to where I put the brown marker. I'm going to wrap, turn that piece back around and I'll bring it up on the side. And trim it off here. And then, and then, then we'll just cover it up with my thread. Okay, now we kept it on the bottom side because we're going to bring this one and we're going to tie it down on top after we put the back section on. But I only want one hook on this, so I'm going to take my pliers, and I am just going to cut that hook off. But there you can see the back section then has no hook on it. It's just an extended body. Now we're going to come up through the hook here. So it rides the right way. And you have to do this part first before you go wrapping any other material on. Okay. And then we're going to wrap this down on top. You wrap the other one on the bottom. This one goes on top. So I'm using 2220 Daiichi um, streamer hooks. And they're a down eye hook. If you have a straight eye hook, it would be a little bit easier. But this works just fine with the 2220s. So that way, when you put it on the top and bottom, you got lots of swivel here. And... Um, it'll lay flat. I can tighten that just a hair and then I'm going to wrap this around the other side 
away from me because I tied the bottom side close to me. Oops, there we go. And we'll wrap this down and cover it up. And trim that off. Alright, now we have our two hooks joined together. Now, we're going to finish the last little section of the body here before we put the legs on. So, to do that, we're going to go back. We're going to add some thin skin. We're going to do the same thing we just did. Thin skin and ribbing and legs, or dubbing and legs. Okay, there's our thin skin, our ribbing. Okay, now this section is going to get a... It's actually nice because it actually um, progressively gets a little bigger, just like the, the, the nymph does. And you're doing it with the material that you already use. You're not actually building up a big dubbing wad or anything like that. So with this, we need very little dubbing on this end because we got it all built up with that intruder wire down there. So just put enough dubbing on there to cover up the thread. And that's why I like using the super fine. Because with the super fine, it doesn't, you don't have to get real thick with it. And then we're just going to give it the color we want. Way too much on there, so we're just going to pull some off. And when we pull some off, we'll come back and unwrap it. And then wrap it back on again to, you know, to tighten it up like that. And then we'll just finish this off. Okay, then we're going to come back here. I'm going to put like two more gills on here, which you could get away without doing it, but it looks nice, so we're going to do it. All right, and now same thing as the back end. Bring our thin skin up over. Tie it down. And like I said, this was actually one of my creations here after being requested to, to see what I could come up with. So, I mean, if you have a better version, get it out there and share it because there is not many out there on, on this fly. And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to wrap in between here. And then we'll bring that up. Okay, trim this off and then we'll trim these down to length here. And try to tease them back a little bit. Like I said, continuing. Let me trim and then I'll show you. Flare them out. There you can see how they get longer to shorter as they go back. So that's what you're looking for there so far, okay? And you can see you got your nice articulation here. It's going to give you a lot of extra movement. It's a big nymph swimming through the water. You want something like this. It will give it a lot of extra activity. Now we're just going to finish this fly up. We're going to put the lively legs on now. Lively legs are the perfect size for this fly. Um, I tie with lively legs and Hemingway legs both. And... Hemingway are way too long for this. Hemingway is more of a like a stonefly style leg, which I tie a lot of stoneflies, so I like that. This is more geared towards a, a mayfly, and these are actually, if you remember looking at the picture at the beginning, these match up really nicely. So we're just going to lay that on there, and we're going to wrap it down. And cover the whole hook shank, or cover the whole um, rubber piece here with our legs. And we're just figuring, figurating them legs in. Get it in there and secure. So they're not rolling around on the hook shank. And, okay. Then the last thing we're going to do, well, two, two things we're going to do here yet. We're going to put a turkey tail on for a wing case. So... Let me show you the how the legs lay on there. So nice and nice and even right on the back. Now we're going to add a piece of turkey tail, about ten strands. Okay, 
Okay. Oh, maybe about eight or ten strands probably. And it's real thick out here at the end. I'm going to trim some of it off. I'm going to get back into this area so it's a little bit thinner. A little bit easier to tie down. Where I'm going to tie down is in between the back two legs. I'm going to tie it down there and then I'm going to come behind the back legs and tie it in. And then I'm going to just going to finish covering this all up. Okay, the last piece of material we're going to put on is I'm going to put two more pieces of that ostrich harrow on and we're going to wrap it in on the bottom or the side. Okay, and then put it back behind the back legs. And what I'm going to do with the ostrich harrow is I'm going to do it like a peacock harrow and I'm going to wrap it around my thread, just keep twisting it around my thread. And we're going to twist it the whole way back to the thread because it's going to take the whole um, ostrich harrow here. And then we're just going to wrap it around and weave it back and forth in between them legs or all around it just like you would do dubbing. This is going to give it a leggy guild under the leg look here. And uh, I just like the looks of this brown. It makes it really nice looking on this fly. And it builds up a little bit of body too. And then we're just going to wrap this the whole way right up the eye. And then I'll pull them legs back and make sure I get a couple good wraps so I don't lose that. Okay, we're going to pull our turkey over. And we're going to tie it off right behind the eye. Making sure not to trap the legs down. Then I like to pull these back and uh, make a wrap or two to tie that down right like that. And then we'll trim that off. Now I'm going to hit the turkey tail with a little bit of UV fly finish thick just to strengthen it. Don't want to build this up a lot. I just want more to strengthen it. So, just to put a nice little casing on there. And then we'll hit it with our light. And actually I'm hitting my thread just a little bit to lock that in place. Okay, and we're going to whip finish and I am finally done with this fly. Like I said, this isn't a fly that, is, you know, this is one of the ones you... It's a three day hatch, so I don't, I'm not going to have a bunch of these, but I'm going to have a couple because half the time I don't get to fish it because something always comes up. But anyway, there it is. And you can see how much time went into that, but how cool of a fly it is and how much action that that's going to have in the water and just a nice looking pattern. So give it a try if you feel up to the challenge. Uh, I'm sure you'll like the outcome of it. The lively legs are size large and size large yellow legs. Just a couple pieces of material to it, but it's just the time that takes to tie it. Anyhow, as always, I hope you enjoyed this fly and uh, a lot of fun coming up with the pattern and you know spending the time tying it with you. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, and I'm sure it'll catch some fish for you during the green drake catch. Have fun with it and experiment. That's what it's all about. That's what's great about fly tying, the experimenting and having fun. Have fun as always, and I'm Sean Holsinger, and please go to our website, holsingersflyshop.com, to find the material to tie this and all the other flies you need to tie. Thanks again. I'm Sean Holsinger. Mm -hmm.